It is the 41st millennium. Mankind battles for survival across the universe, besieged on all fronts by the heretic, the mutant, and the alien. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. One faction of Space Marines stands amidst the chaos, the mightiest of the Emperor's warriors and a beacon of light in the darkness. This legion, the ninth legion of Adeptus Astartes, the Blood Angels. Hello, good evening friends. Hello, hello. Are we good? Yes, we're good. Nice to see you all. Um, you'll be very pleased to know that I managed to make some custom flamers. Look at these bad boys from the stream last night. So these are like jerry rigged with some metal parts. So I got some flamers from my ball predator along with a custom turret I made last night. I've got flame I've got a ball flamer. Yay! So if anyone submitted a, a flamer ball predator tonight. Brilliant, because I'm going to be playing one for the first time ever this week. Um, so, let's get into some lists. Good evening. Uh, who we got in chat? Yep, we're good. Uh, Paul, good evening. Son of Sanguinius, good evening. Maximus, nice to see you. Michael, um, how are you doing? Welcome to the Ball Club, yes. Uh, I'm going to drop the Redeemer this week. We're going to play uh, a Ball Predator. I've been to the, look at this, I've been to the Death Star Cantina. Lamar, good evening, how are you? So, uh, it's about three weeks apparently, to, until we get like a points drop for Blood Angels. So maybe I'll make a video, I mean I'll make a video as soon as we get some points drops, but we are expecting points drops sometime in the next three weeks. Um, and yeah, let's get straight into some army lists for tonight. As always, if you've got any questions, try and just throw them in the chat. Uh, I should be able to answer some of them. If you are a member and you have a green name, remember you get free super chat every month. So uh, people always say on the I think even on the live stream last week, Lamarta, somebody was saying like, remember if you're a member, you can click the little button underneath the chat, the one that's got the dollar sign on it, and you can use a free super chat. You can do that every month as a member. So for live streaming or anything like that, and you really need to get my attention, you can do it for free. So please use it. Okay. Um. Sons of Sanguinius list, 2,000 points. This is a weird format for this list, but we'll, we'll, we'll make it work. Um, so we've got a Warlord who is a Sanguinary Priest with a Jump Pack, who is Artisan of... Hold on. We've got Artisan of War on a Lieutenant with a Combi Weapon. We've got 18 units. So we've got two Captains, Power Fist, Plaza Pistols, one with Assault Intercessors, Oh, one with each Assault Intercessor, so we've got two five Assault Intercessors in a Land Raider. Uh, we've got a third Captain with Phobos Armor, with Eliminators. We don't see that very often. Good evening, Mike, how are you? Uh, we've got a Lieutenant with a Combi Weapon and the Artisan of War. Artisan of War actually seems like a strange choice for that Lieutenant, because he's lone operative. Artisan of War makes him more survivable, like it gives him a better save, it does give him some AP. I mean, I feel less, I feel less excited about the AP. Um, Artisan of War gives you two up save, and you improve the armor penetration of the bearer's weapons by one. But it's on a lone operative character, so I feel like. I would probably spend that 20 points elsewhere. I would rather have um, Artisan of War on one of these captains with the Power Fist to make the Power Fist AP3. That captain's going to be in the fray fighting, so to me that seems like that would be a better choice. Um, you've got the Sangry Priest with the Jump Pack. Okay, uh, you've also got Lamartas. So you've got seven characters in this list. That kind of seems a bit, a bit crazy. Sanguinar, Lamartas, a Sangry Priest... A lieutenant, a combi weapon, and two captains. That's a lot of points, man. 240 plus another 180, so that's 420, plus another 250. 670 points of characters? I've, I've, 
I feel like 300, we talked about this before, I feel like 350 should be the limit, but maybe these captains can be excused, but still, it seems like an awful lot of points and characters. So you've got two squads of assault intercessors, you've got 10 death company with powerful infernal pistols, they like the Lamartas, and then you've got one squad of eliminators. I must be missing something. Um, I think this list was sent to me on Discord. Am I missing a part of it? Yeah, I'm missing some of it. Sorry. Okay, let me just paste it in. Yeah, yeah I've got it here. Uh, you've got Scout Squad times two. I do like having two or three scoring units. We have Suppressors. I was actually thinking about trying Suppressors and just keeping them back for 85 points, but the second they get targeted, they're going to die. They're like toughness 4 with 2 wounds, 3 up save. They're going to die so fast. I don't feel like their guns... They feel like they should be a glass cannon type unit. But their guns aren't even good. Let's just check. Suppressors. Suppressors are like a unit that time forgot along with Reavers. Um... Should... <laughs> You know, I made a video actually, one of the previous editions, about talking about how suppressors and reavers were rubbish and that they get ignored every balance data slate. And guess what? They got ignored last balance data slate as well. Um, strength 8, minus 1, 2 damage, 3 shots, BS 4 up. So you're probably going to end up having to move them. So you get 4.5 hits at strength 8, minus 1. It's really underwhelming, isn't it? Um, I guess they move 12 and they have 48 inches. That's their that's their thing. I don't I don't know how you run suppressors. I mean, I guess I could run a squad of them for fun and just keep them at the very back of the board pinging off the odd auto cannon shot. I just don't think it's impactful enough. Uh we've got a Vanguard veteran scored with jump packs. We've got a uh, ball predator with the Hunter Killer, the Stormbolt, or the two Heavy Flamers, and the and the Firestorm. In the Vanguard Detachment, yeah, it might be okay in the Vanguard Detachment, getting plus one Ballistic Skill and AP. It'd be minus one to hit. Yeah, maybe, maybe there's a play for Suppressors in the Vanguard Detachment. You don't see them in any other detachment. You've got a single Gladiator Lancer, and then you've got the single Land Raider. Okay, I... If you if you'd had a Redeemer here, I would have actually prefer the regular Land Raider, because I think the Lancer, while it is good, it only gets two shots, so it's not going to kill anything, basically, with its two shots. It's going to need some backup, so I guess four Las Cannons from a Land Raider would help. You do have a small squad of Eliminators. Oh no, they're Sniper Eliminators. Okay. Um, I need to look at the Captain and Phobos armor with the Instigator Carbine, because I don't really know... The profile of the instigator carbine. Not many people run the captain of full boss armor. He was cool last edition because he could get four damage on a snipe, but I guess now he gets just one shot. Really? Okay. Well, they've made this guy much weaker. Eighty points. He's got six attacks from a knife. One shot with precision minus two two damage. Uh, after both players have deployed their armies, if your army includes one or more uh, models with this ability, you can set up three friendly Phobos or Scout units. Okay, so you can redeploy your Scouts and I guess your Eliminators. I guess that's maybe worth 80 points, but uh, I feel like this is too many characters. 670 points in characters. What have you got then? You've got 400 points in fire support. Killing units in this list. Like units that are going to kill the enemy units. You've got the 10 death company. I guess you've got the assault intercessor shenanigans that we did the maths on this week. Which are actually pretty decent. The suppressors aren't going to kill anything. I guess the ball predator will kill us some infantry. The vanguard veterans seem like a tanky unit. Fast moving tanky unit to a certain extent. They don't do too much killing. I can't decide. I I feel like I feel like this list might be okay. 
Did he say what the priest was with? The priest... What, what can the priest even attach to here? Sangri priest with a jump pack. Oh, it attaches to the Vanguard veterans. See, I don't know if I feel like adding a priest to give the Vanguard veterans a 5-up feel no pain is as good as just adding 5 more Vanguard veterans. The priest's so expensive, right? Like, 90 points for the priest. Whereas 5 Vanguard veterans with Storm Shields would just be 105 points. I think if you're going to add the priest, you want to add it to the 10-man squad. So I think the first thing I would I'd, I'd either I'd either be trying to make this Vanguard Veteran Squad a 10-man, or I think I'd just be trying to get rid of that Priest. I'm also not totally sure that I feel the Phobos Captain and Eliminators plus the Redeploy is worth it. Um, maybe in another detachment. Has anyone had fun with Eliminator? Or has, anyone had, has anyone from chat had good success with Eliminators from the Sons of Sanguinius attachment? So we got 28 people watching tonight. Uh, we got 12 likes. So 16 people haven't hit the like button yet. If you can do that for me at some point, I would be really appreciative. All right, so uh, this list was submitted to me by a guy called Gar. He's a new member. Um, hold on, I've got Discord in streamer mode. It always turns the streamer mode on, I guess, when you're streaming. Um... Gar Tizang was his name. Gar Tenzing? Gar Tenzang? So he's been trying out different units. Finally settled on a 2k list. He wants it to feel flesh tears without doing the whole assault only list. Uh, both captains join assault intercessors unit. Both go in the radar. Ideally this would be a redeemer, but they are proving impossible to get hold of right now. I actually think I prefer not having the redeemer in this list. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually dropping my Redeemer this week and not playing it anymore. Uh, on a turn, I can put 26 times Strength 10 Dev Wounds, 18 from the Captain, 8 from the Sergeant, Hammer. Okay, uh, I think I want to check a ruling here. I think Finest Hour on the Captain only affects the captain. But let me check that. Because I don't play this. Once per battle, let's start the fight phase. If it does until the end of the phase, add three attached to the characteristics of melee weapons equipped by this model, and those weapons have the devastating wound ability. Yeah. So fin Finest Hour is affecting the captain only. So I think you've said here you can get 26 strength 10 dev wounds. You can't. You can get the Captain's Dev Wounds. You're not getting Dev Wounds for the Sergeants that's attached. You're not getting Dev Wounds for the Chain Swords. Uh, you can get plus one to wound from Red Rampage. And you can get it free because it's Battle Strat. Yes, you can do that. And you can do grenades and you could do Tank Shock as well. So you could you could do a bunch of mortals. But um, you're not getting... 10th Edition has a lot of things like that where... Sometimes it affects the model, sometimes it affects the unit, sometimes it affects both. I guess you just need to be aware of that. Finest Hour does not affect the unit he leads, it's just for him. Okay. Vanguard Veterans with Storm Shields and a Sangry Priest have been found to surprisingly good and fairly durable. For 25 attacks, Strength 7, AP 2 and the charge. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying they're not good, I just think you, you get more benefit adding that Priest if it's a 10-man squad. And I think you've got too many characters. So I think I'm probably trying to be getting away with some of those characters and get some more killing units, like a 10-man Vanguard Veteran Squad. The scouts infiltrate and scout along with Eliminators to force opponent back as far as possible, and then redeploy uh, after turn 1 is decided. I can also get the Sangre into the early game uh, if someone has to charge them. I mean, I like the idea of the scouts being forward, and the Sangre can get into the game early if they're charged. Again, I'm not sure I'm on board with the full boss character. I just think you have too many points in character. 670 points in characters is not something that I would be even willing to consider. I think if my list was anywhere close to 500, I would be dropping characters. I think... I was going to say, I've got my list here at the moment. I think I have four characters, not seven. Um, 75, 110, 80, so that's 265 and then an assassin. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, so I'm at like 355 characters. You're, you're literally almost double, 678 characters. It's kind of crazy. The Lieutenant does shenanigans on his 2-up save and AP1 if he needs to support another unit. Again, I'd, I would give the 2-up AP1 to one of those captains that you're going to be in the front line with. The Ball Predator is mostly because they're cool, fast, and provide anti uh, another anti-armor target. The Lancer is more anti-armor, and although it's not my favourite, the Ballista or Vindicator is, it's more feared, so it can force errors. Simply having line of sight down a battlefield. Yeah, I mean, the Lancer is amazing if your opponent does have an, doesn't have invulnerable saves. It's as simple as that. I think it's getting really dark in here. Let me put a light on. Uh, yeah. Um... Part of the list is about leveraging wound rerolls and bonuses and other parts providing the opponent with a variety of targets all a little different to maybe force some mistakes. The real powerhouse are the Death Company. Yep. Uh, the Assault Intercessors do a lot of damage. Early game, an opponent is potentially faced with two Scouts, Eliminators, Land Raiders, Ball Predators, Death Company, and Vanguard Veterans uh, all being threats. So it would need to be dealt with. How have you armed your Scouts? Did you give them all knives? Scouts. Close combat weapons, good, good, good. A couple of shotguns. Yeah, okay, cool. Scouts are armed correctly. Um, possible pills for the list is the Phobos Captain and Eliminators. Uh, the Suppressors, you found them handy for 9 redeployable, 4 plus to hit strength 8 minus 1. It rarely does more than chip damage, still handy for backfield objectives, actions. Uh, is there anything I've missed? Does it feel flesh terrors? I mean, to feel properly flesh tears, you probably need to replace one of the captains with Gabriel Seth, right? Seth can go inside a land raider, so you're fine. Oh, but then you lose you lose Lamartas. Okay, yeah, I mean, I would probably rather Lamartas than Gabriel Seth. I guess you lose the Sanguinar as well. Uh, I think... I think... I feel like the captain and Phobos or lieutenant and combi weapon need to be dropped. I think if you really love the shenanigans from the Lieutenant with Combi Weapon, I would drop the Captain and Phobos with the Eliminators. I just think that's 170 points. Is that right? Uh, 80 plus... No, 155 points that are not doing a whole lot for you. Uh... There could be an argument to drop the suppressors as well, but yes. Um, if you've already got two squads of scouts, and you just basically said your suppressors are also moving around doing actions because the best they can do is chip damage, then essentially you have three scoring units already. Eliminators with, bolt, uh, with the carbines and the captain with the carbine are a scoring unit. They don't, they don't do damage. They're never going to be able to snipe away an enemy character. So they're literally going to be on the board to scout and um, so I think they, they have to be dropped. Uh, one second, someone from my work is like my actual day job is texting me um, Hmm. Okay. So I don't I don't like that. What what would I put into this for 155 points? I mean, I like running 15 Death Company. I think they're very good. We, we talked about this Vanguard Veteran. We said that they would be a lot better if you had 10 of them. So let's start there. Let's put in 10 more Vanguard Veterans. Um, then you're down to 50 points. I would 100% change this Artisan of War onto one of the Captains. So the Captain hits harder, is more survivable. Um, but I'm struggling to know what I would do with... Um, I might even, you know, I was going to say, I might even lose that Artisan of War just to get a third scout squad. You could argue more Death Company would be good, yes. Um, I just think if you've if you've pointed into a priest in Van Vets and you like that and you think they're survivable, then I would um, maybe double down on that and add five more Vanguard Vets. I, I really dislike, because you could always uh, rapid ingress those Van Vets, right? I, I, 
I think you can get to a point where you've got too many shenanigans, which you do. You've got five. I typically aim for three. And then you have... Um, and when I aim for three, sometimes my lists run with two. Uh, so I, I think too much shenanigans, too many characters. I would like more killing units. Um, but I think if you, you know... You'd be at 50 points. Like, there could be an argument there where you just drop the suppressors as well. I, I think the suppressors and the lieutenant, I think it's too much, man. You've got 50 points. There's a lot you could do. Like, you could drop the Sanguiner at that point and put a Vindicator tank in. I think a Vindicator tank's always going to probably be useful. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's certainly a tricky one. I think too many characters, too much shenanigans is 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 what I think with this list. I feel like I feel like I if I played this list, I would be very worried that I don't have the damage output to deal with some enemies. And that's before I add five more Vanguard veterans. I think you have to hundred percent add the five more Vanguard veterans and lose the snipers and lose the captain that is with those snipers. Um, but yeah, feel free to come back to me. Uh, say what you think and uh, we'll talk about it more in a future show. Let's talk about Zacharis next. He is also running Sons of Sanguinius. He is a Captain, a Judasar and Lamartes. Just under 300 points there on characters, I guess. Um, he has double Blister Strednaught. I actually have never done this, but I thought it would be pretty good because it's cheap, right? Um, You know, it's four Laz Cannons, it's four Strength, ten Crack Grenades. I think all its weapons are 36 inches. The Laz Cannons are probably 48, but the... Like, the effective range of it will be 36 inches, because that's what your, um... Not the Brutalis, the Ballistas. Yeah, two Laz Cannons at 48, two Missile Crack at, um... Oh, they're 48 as well, sorry. So everything's 48. So effectively like a 56 inch threat range. There's only 280 points and you also get to reroll hits against targets that are above half strength. So basically at the start of the battle, you'll get to reroll a bunch of hits with these guys. You don't need to waste off the moment on them. Um, you played against Rukari. Do you know uh, what units an Archon leads? I have played Dukari like three times, man. I'm playing them again on Wednesday, but no, I don't know what they lead. Why? Uh, the Ballista whiffs constantly. I've used it a bunch of times in tournaments, man. Um, I thought it's okay. I think it's I think it's okay for 140 points. I think if you've got one of them, yeah, it probably whiffs. If you've got two of them, two of them for 280 points, shooting everything at the same target, is reasonably decent. At the start of the game, that's re-rolling all hits, four Laz Cannons, four... Strength 10 crack missiles. I feel like that usually does a decent amount of damage for the points you pay for them. And they sit 48 inches away. And they are strength... Te uh, sorry, toughness 10 2 up. Uh, T10 2 up. 12 wounds. So, I, I, they can tank shock. They can get 6 attacks at strength 8. Like, they're fine. They're fine for... Uh, if you're trying to put some fire support in a Blood Angels list, and you want to have, like the smallest amount of points spent on it, your choices are the Ballistuses, the Predator Annihilators, or arguably Predator Destructors. I think all of those are decent choices. The Ballistus is probably my favourite choice, because it's more anti-vehicle, anti-monster. Um, and it's got re-rolls in. But, uh, yeah, I, I've used it a bunch of uh, games and tournaments and stuff. Um... Usually when we talk about Dreadnoughts, we always say you have to pick them in twos. If you pick one, you'll usually find it whiffs. Uh, people always say when you when you do Dreadnoughts, it was the same when you used to run Redemptor Dreadnoughts. Everyone used to say you need to run two Redemptor Dreadnoughts because the Plasma Cannons are so swingy. Because it was like, it used to be D6 shots, I think it's D6 plus one now, it's still swingy. But um, it always used to be if you run one, pla if you run, if you run one Dreadnought, you probably roll a one and swing, swing low, you know, on your number of Plasma Shots. Uh, you've got the Blade Guard, I assume, that are attached to the Judiciar. 
You know, the 10 death company that I assume are attached to La Marta's. You've got sort of infiltrators. You've got 10 sangry guard. Crazy, man. I guess they're attached to the captain to give them plus one strength. Uh, so the sangry guard would be... I think their strength six... Nor no, their strength five normally. This is bad that I don't even know the profile on sangry guard, but no one runs them. Um... Okay, uh, the regard. I'm sure the strength 5 minus 2, 2 damage. So they become strength 8 minus 2, 2 damage, but the power fist on the one guy or the two guys, one guy, two guys, two guys, they'd be strength 11 power fists because they're getting plus 1 strength from the sergeant. Sorry, it's plus 1 strength from the captain and then plus 2 strength from the charge, so that's nice. Uh, the captain is the warlord as well, so Sangry Guard get minus 1 to hit and wound in melee. We just don't see anyone playing them. 350 points in, doesn't sound too bad. But Death Company at 260 do just as much, if not more, damage. So it's hard to justify the Sangry Guard uh, for that one extra pip. Um, we'll save. I did, actually, I did actually message him and ask him why 10 Sangry Guard and not more Death Company, so we'll come to that. You've got one score of Scouts, you've got two Vindicators, you've got the Kaladin of Assassins, so maybe you're a tiny bit light on scoring in that you've got the two units. Two Vindicator Tanks is very good. Two Vindicators plus two Ballistices makes your list very and makes it very armor heavy, so you might struggle a little bit if you come up into a lot of armor. Um, or sorry, a lot of people have anti-armor, like Drukari with Haywire and stuff like that. All right, so I, I literally said, why Sangry Guard? He said, they've done well in one round so far, as long as they either stay out of sight or in the thick of it. Minus one to wound is nice, disruption, and they hit with strength eight on the charge, strength 11 for the two fists. I originally had them being followed by a squad of suppressors to shoot the charge target to give them minus one to hit as well, increasing their survival. They also have kind of made... I also have kind of made you as I haven't bought any more Death Company. Okay, I mean, I would just proxy your Sangry Guard models as Death Company models. I think that would be fine. The last thing I do use them for is Rapid Ingress. It's hard to hide a 10-man squad. It really is. It's sometimes hard to even hide a 10-man squad with Rapid Ingress, right? Because there's only so many places you can come down in the battlefield. Aradine, good evening. Uh, the Ballista isn't half bad at anti-infantry with the Rocket Frags. I've had really bad luck with it on the on the Rocket Frags, actually. When I used it, I thought the rockets, uh, the frag was really bad, but, um, is it 2d6? I guess 2d6 is swingy as hell. Yeah, 2d6 strength 5. Yeah, it's swingy as all hell, I guess. If it had been like 2d3 plus 3 or something, that might have been better. Uh, so... Two scouting units, or sorry, two scoring units, the scouts and the Kaladis, or maybe one shy. Double Vindicator is very nice. It does a lot of damage if you can get it in range. Double Vindicator is inherently much stronger, in my opinion, in the Gladius Detachment, because in the Gladius Detachment you can fall back and shoot, you can advance and shoot, um, but it, Vindicator tanks are still really good with Oath of Moment. Uh, ten Sangry Guard, I don't like them. Especially if you're going to be Oath of Moment in the Vindicator's target. I feel like Sangry Guard need their target to be Oath of Momented, so I would rather just have more Death Company. Um, you do have the 10 Death Company of the Martyrs, you do have Infiltrators to hold the back line, you do have Blade Guard for holding the middle, you do have Double Ballista Dreadnought for even more so fire support. This is generally not a bad list, I guess. Um, what's this weakness, I suppose? Two scoring units? It's going to be weak against lists that have a lot of... Um, anti-armor type abilities. Uh, yeah, the one thing I don't like is the Captain and the Sangry Guard. I would, I would run... I'd honestly run a five-man with a Chaplain and another five-man with a Chaplain over running ten Sangry Guard. But I haven't I haven't played the Sangry Guard for like two times at the start of the edition. Um and they were really bad at the start of the edition. So maybe um Maybe they're better now and still people aren't just playing them. Are they better now and people are still not playing them? I don't know. So, 
I feel like I posted on the GW community site about getting these guys a points drop last balance data slate and said, like, no one's playing them. I think this is one of the first lists we've seen with people playing them. I guess maybe they're worth another play since the, since the last balance data slate, but nobody's done it, or very few people have done it. Um, what do you think of the Eliminator Jank jumping in and out of Repulsor? Yeah, I mean... Maybe if Eliminators had like still had the the high strength last fusels, I could be on board with it. Um, does anyone think the new Sangri Guard will be on forty millimeters and five man max squads? If they are in bigger bases, man, I'm just going to buy base extenders. Um, I'm not going to replace thirty Sangri Guard models, but uh, yeah, maybe maybe we'll just get them on bigger base extenders. I do hope they do something to them though, because. They just don't seem... I think the problem is Death Company reroll all their hits, right? And Death Company get minus one damage. So it's just like two amazing buffs that the Sangri Guard do not get. And the... And I mean, I guess if you do 250 divided by 350... Or 260, sorry. 260 divided by... 360, like... So they're 28% more expensive than the Death Company. They have less strength on their attacks. Sure, they got one more attack, but I don't think one more attack makes up for the fact that Death Company reroll all their hits. And, um... I forget. Death Company reroll their charges as well. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. So I, I, would, I would lose the Sang Regard. The rest of the list, I feel, is okay, Zacharis. Uh, Zach, uh, Drakari Scourges with Dark Lances are scary, yeah. I played against a list that had 12 Drakari Scourges, well, it would have been three squads of five, I guess. So I think that's 12 Dark Lances in the Scourges a few weeks ago, Michael. And I actually won that game because I put units in reserve with Flamers, so I could come in and flame them, because those things just... They move, in, they move out, they shoot you, they move back into cover. It's real pain in the arse. Alright, Kevin's submitted a list who... I guess if he didn't win the RTT, he must have been damn close. A three and zero list. So, have I added one too many lists here? Yeah. Okay. So we've got four more lists to go through tonight. Uh, two captains, a chaplain, a chaplain with a jump pack, and Lamartis. So basically three chaplains. You got two assault intercessor squads, I assume, there with the captains. You've got two impulsors and a rhino. You don't see that very often. Uh, we've got 10 Assault Intercessors, we've got 10 Death Company on foot, we've got 10 Death Company with Jump Packs, we've got 2 Gladiator Lancers, we've got a squad of Infiltrators, we've got 2 squads of Scouts. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is a fairly solid list, I guess, right? I'm just trying to figure out, so I guess, 5 Assault Intercessors with a Captain, 1 Impulsor, 5 Assault Intercessors with a Captain, and other Impulsor, the Foot Chaplain, and 10 Death Company in the Rhino. Uh, 10 Assault Intercessors with Jump Packs, I think unled, I think that's where they are, they're, they're not led by anyone. 10 Death Company on foot were led by the Chaplain, 10 Death Company with Jump Packs were led by Lamartes. Yep, 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 yep. And then 2 Lancers. That high AP4 strength 14 firepower, the infiltrators, and then two scoring units. And you could also argue that infiltrators could become a scoring unit later in the game as well if they, if, if one of the lancers or something is sitting on a backfield objective. So this list um, went 3 0 at an RTT. I kind of like it. You know, a lot of people do a land raider um, with these assault intercessors inside, but having two impulsors is actually like 100 points cheaper. And you have an invon save on the Impulsor. I assume you take the Shield Dome. Yeah, he's got it Shield Domed. Um, and I guess, it's, I think it's harder to kill two transports than to kill one, right? Like, you know, if they're... If, you, if they've got to take out two Impulsors, or, or they've got to kill a, a Rhino as well, it's harder to kill three transports. Even if a Land Raider has more toughness and stuff, it's one target. So it's easier to get more of your army line of sight on a single target. Well, actually, this is kind of cool, I guess. The Impulsors and Rhinos and that can just also sit on objectives and just be obnoxious, adding to the OC. They have some Stormbolters, some Stubbers, whoop-de-doo, I guess. Um, 
So you basically have 30 close combat marines there, plus another 10 that we know are deadly, led by captains coming out of transports, uh, infiltrators in the backfield, two squads of scouts to score, two lancers. Um, I do think if you're going to run lancers, it's better to run them in twos, because it's four strength 14 hits at that point, so arguably you would hope with the baked in reroll hits and wounds that the opponent's going to make some failed saves. So uh, this is a very, very strong list. Um, I like it. I don't see very much negative about it at all. He spent um, 160 plus 125. So he's just coming in just shy of 400 points here, if I can, if my... It's Sunday night, I was going to say. My brain's been switched off for two days while I mess around. So, yeah, so he spent 405 points on characters. I think this is probably, like, this is my upper limit for characters. I would play this. I would play this list 100% as it is. Um, I know that sometimes Double Lancer has weaknesses if your opponent has a lot of invun saves. Not every list can... Every list's going to have some sort of weakness somewhere, right? Like, you can't... But... You still do have 20 marines with thunder hammers, or power fists now, I guess they're not thunder hammers anymore. You do have 10 jump guys that do mortal wounds, you do have those two small deadly assault intercessor squads. I like this list a lot actually, um, I'm be willing to say, I'll be willing to play this list even though it's like, this is my upper limit of characters, 405. I like the fact it's got three chaplains as well. Um, that Foot Chaplain has a real interesting ability as well that we don't see very often that I talked about when if um, if a transport is destroyed he can make the guys that spill out of it ignore that battle shock essentially and still hold an objective within 12 inches so there's some there's even some more shenanigans with that uh, Foot Transport so overall um, I like this list a lot You've never heard me say I'll play a list. Maybe I need to say that more often if I play the list. Um, but yeah, no, I, I would play this. I think this is very strong. I can just think how you're deploying it. You know, like, you've got your three transports on the front line, you've got your death company, ten man, you could easily put them on the board if it, you feel safe. Or you could get them in strategic reserve. Um, yeah. I don't think I'm worried the fact that there's only two units of scouts as well just because there's so many other there's basically five other units there and the transports could do actions and stuff as well this is a great list who made this list Kevin Marka um or Kevin Camarata uh sorry I butcher everyone's names I'm rubbish at English but um yeah I think this is a great list guns and angels uh if you're just starting and you've got all these models I, I've got nothing negative to say about this list. I think it's great. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I can see why it went three and zero. It's a really strong list. It's a good, it's a good template. Um, maybe if Kevin goes to another tournament, we can get him on the chat, like get his list on one of the more in-depth breakdowns on the channel. Uh, okay, the Marty bus is our next list. It's another Sons of Sanguinius list. It's 2,000 points. We'll come back and read his comments at the end once we know what's in the list. We've got a captain with a jump pack. Not sure I care for a heavy bolt pistol on that captain. He could have an... In I actually don't know if the captain with the jump pack can have an infernal pistol. He can have a plasma pistol or a flamer, I think. Uh, maybe when we get our own codex, we'll be allowed to switch out for an infernal pistol. We've got Lamartes, we've got Librarian and Phobos. He's going to make some infiltrators likely uh, untargetable. We've got the Sangry Priest with the jump pack. I actually think the Sangry Priest with the jump pack deserves a point cost drop, right? Whereas, like, a Chaplain with a jump pack is 70 and the Sangry Priest is 90. Is he really worth that many more points? I don't know. Uh, we've got five Assault Intercessors, we've got ten Assault Intercessors with jump packs, we've got two squads of Devastator Centurions, interesting choice for Sons of Sanguinius because Devastator Centurions have a problem, in my opinion in the Sons of Sanguinius, because there's no way for these guys to fall back and shoot 
I think these guys get tons of value out of being able to fall back and shoot. So, uh, I was playing Devastator Centurions in my Sons of Sanguinius list, and I dropped them because they couldn't fall back and shoot. Uh, yeah, so you could have a Plasma Pistol or a Hand Flamer. I think that's... I mean, you should take the Plasma Pistol for sure over a Heavy Bolt Pistol. Heavy Bolt Pistol generally does nothing. You then have two 10-man squads of Death Company, you have a squad of Infiltrators and Double Scouts, and then you've got two Helverins with auto cannons. Okay, so for everyone not that's familiar, Helverins are allied units. They're basically a bit like Dreadnoughts. Um, they're not bad, and they've got great OC. They've got great move. Do you know what? There's a lot to like about Helverins. For the points you pay for them, they're very, very good, right? It's 140 points at the moment for a Helverin. That's really cheap. They've got 3 up save, they've got toughness 10, they've got 12 wounds. They've got a built-in 5 up in Vaughn against shooting. Yeah. Uh, they have OC 8. They get to um, get anti-fly 2 up, I guess, if you're in range of an objective marker or in your deployment zone. Their auto cannons are armed with 2 of them, right? Yeah, 2 auto cannons. So you get 8 shots, strength 9, minus 1, Three damage. So they're very good at killing elite infantry. That's probably what they're there to do. But they're also OC eight. They can tank shock, I guess, um, with their strength six feet as well. So potentially some mortals coming out from that. Okay, they're cheap full. You know, like the same price as a ballista dreadnought. Arguably. Yeah, I mean, arguably a little bit faster, a little bit more OC, different profile, right? They're going to kill infantry. I, I think armagers are generally quite good for 140 points. So double scouts, infiltrators, 20 death company, the devastator centurions with last cannons and missile launchers, these uh, assault intercessors, etc. Uh, here's my list. The Helverns are an odd pick, I know, but I like them for the 12 inch move, the OC8, the toughness 10, the 12 wounds, and the 5 plus V range. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say they're the most odd pick. They are 3 damage for every failed save as well. Um, this paid off into Necrons where it flipped an objective for me to do an action. Yeah, I mean, OC8 on them is amazing. Uh, their 140 point distraction trade piece into the new Tau Codex. That's true as well. They got an Invun save. And that's and that's one thing that, that Marines always really lack. And that's that's kind of why I'm dropping uh one of my land raiders is because sometimes having an Invun save is really, really useful. So Halverns with Invun saves I guess can be more useful sometimes than the Ballista Dreadnoughts, just because sometimes you roll those Invun saves and that can be very strong. Uh, I usually run one Helverin with three man Devastator Centurion for turn one and turn two for the long range shooting, then Rapid Ingress the two Death Company in turn two and three. Also, depending on map and layout and terrain cover, I may put my Jump Pack Assault Intercessors in reserve. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I guess the main thing to know is Devastator Centurions are super slow. Super slow. They move four inches. They are the most effective shooting point for point that we can get, right? Because Centurions buy, they reroll ones all the time. So they hit on threes, they reroll ones all the time. If you're fighting, a, if you're shooting a unit on an objective, they get full rerolls. They also each have a twin last cannon. So that's basically, if you're shooting someone on an objective, you've got three last cannons, rerolling hits and rerolling wounds. Those missiles are very good as well. They're like strength nine, D3 shots. AP2, D3 damage. So, I mean, statistically, they should get two missiles per, cent per cent ah, excuse me, two missiles per centurion, strength nine, and they should do two damage per. Uh, and they have blast. So, they are a bit swingy, but you do have three guys. So, you're going to get six shots of strength nine minus two, six damage. Again, if you're shooting onto an objective, you're rerolling all hits, and you've got blast. These guys are pretty good at killing um, elite infantry as well because of strength nine. So, devastators, centurion devastators are the best damaging, long range damaging unit that marines have. Those missiles, by the way, go thirty six inches, same as the last cannons that they have, or 
36 th these that gives these guys 36 inch uh, threat range however i think these guys are much better in vanguard because in vanguard you can redeploy them um, i think you can redeploy them every turn right so you can run six in vanguard and you can redeploy them every turn and you can use a strat to give them more ep um, I think they're good in Gladius because you can fall back and shoot. I think they're they're all right in Sons of Sanguinius. But if I was playing against someone that had these, I would just make it my mission to get my like get a chaff unit into these guys. Because if a unit gets into them, they cannot fall back and shoot, and that's a huge problem. That's their big problem. Three hundred and seventy points. You can't fall back and shoot. That's one thing that this list would benefit from a library in Dreadnought because you could. Pos Librarian Dreadnought helping you reposition these guys around is also very, very good. Um, ten Assault Intercessors, the Six Centurions, 20 Jump Pack Marines, Squad of Infiltrator, Scouts, Armagers. It's not bad. Um, you do need to kind of maybe use a unit to babysit those Devastators as well, so they can't get to them. But it sounds like he maybe does that with the armagers. He maybe puts the armagers in front. They've got a big base. They're trying to hard to get round of. Um, so this list seems okay. Um, but my problem, and I have played Centurions a lot, right? Like, um, I was going to say, how many games have I used Centurions? I've probably played like thirty games of Tenth Edition now. I've probably use Centurions in half. And and Centur the thing with Centurions is just they're so friggin' slow. And in in half of those games I played Centurions, I had a library in Dreadnought. And the library in Dreadnought was literally gonna teleport the Centurions around because they're so friggin' slow. Um, because they only move four inches, there's definitely gonna be turns where you just won't be able to shoot with these guys because they won't be able to get line of sight from anything. People will move out of line of sight from them because they know that they're deadly. So I, I, I think if I was playing this list, I would try really hard to find a way to get Library and Dreadnought into this list. Because I think that would help immensely with those slow ass centurions. Um Librarian Dreadnought's like 170 points. I'd probably look at dropping Librarian with Phobos and get 70. Then I maybe look at dropping five Death Company with Jump Packs to get like another 130. There we go. I can have a Librarian Dreadnought. Librarian Dreadnought can teleport all infantry and you've got quite a lot of infantry in this list, especially. So it just lets you pick your Centurions up and put them down optimally 36 inches away from the enemy where they're not going to get cover and where you can just unload on them. The Centurions get no negatives to moving and shooting because none of their weapons have heavy or anything like that. So that's my change, Marty the Bus, to make this list better. But overall, I think it's pretty decent. Okay, list number five for tonight. This is submitted by Astartes Party. Um, and he's also doing some... Uh, Sons of Sanguinius. Apparently I'm struggling to talk this late at night. Hello, JT Money. Sorry. How are you doing? Um... Paul said, what list would be best for Flesh Terrors? I don't know if I've seen a Flesh Terrors list win a tournament this edition. Because I usually try and cover like tournament winning lists, right Paul? Um, I don't think I've seen a Flesh Terrors list win an event. Uh... But, I mean, flesh, it's, it's a weird thing to say, like, what list would be best for Flesh Terrors, because essentially you share the Blood Angels detachment now. So, like, you, you share the plus one to wound. The only thing that stops you being Flesh Terrors, I suppose, is some of the named characters. So, uh... It's almost like you can play any of these lists now and be and have them painted Flesh Terrors. I don't think it matters as much as it once did. I guess it doesn't matter as much as WYSIWYG once did, right? Uh, okay, so we've got Judasar and Lamartis. We've got Intercessors. They'll be sticking a home field objective, probably. We've got 10 Assault Intercessors Jump Packs. We've got a single Ballista Dreadnought. We have 6 Blade Guard, likely with Judasar. We have uh, 10 Death Company, likely with Lamartis. We've got 5 more Death Company likely roaming free we have a squad of infiltrators we have a predator destructor we have a redemptor dreadnought we have a repulsor and we have a terminator squad 
quite a few play picks we don't see here. So, I have played the Destructor. I think it's great. I think it's decent for 130 points. I have played a Repulsor. I think it's pretty decent for 190 points. Something is always going to die early in the game. Why not have it be, a, I, I want to say, a cheap Repulsor? Because a Repulsor is 190 points, which is a lot, but is 16 wounds. So I think 190 points for a 16 wound T12 vehicle is actually kind of cheap. Doesn't have a ton of damage. You know, one last cannon shot, twin linked. Oh, I'm, my daughter's up, we'll be right back. What's up, sweetheart? All right, I am going to be like five minutes. My four-year-old needs to do a poo. So I'll, I will be back.
Hello again. Um, yes, this is still going on. I had to deal with my four-year-old. I think she's gone to bed now. Okay, so yeah, the Repulsor is good for 190 points, I feel like. Terminators with Power Fists. Maybe you, you rapid ingress them, these guys can work, but I don't use them myself. I haven't had much luck with them. We did see a tournament winning list take them. Um, so someone won a tournament using Terminators with Power Fist, so they are good. I think it's better to have the Power Fist than the Chain Fist these days. Okay, uh, eventually when my Land Raiders default will be dropping the Repulsor in exchange for it, as well as the Terminators for Chaplain for the five Death Company and Eradicators or Heavy Intercessors. I think Eradicators are very good as well at the moment. Um, I don't have Scouts or an Assassin currently. Oh, you need to get some Scouts because Scouts are so good. Um, I know they don't sell them, so just buy something else that, that can represent scouts. I bought um, Games Workshop. Uh, there's two units that I bought that represent scouts. Um, I'll show you. You can buy a squad of these guys, the Palantine Enforcers. I basically painted their chest pieces red and gave these little bits black trims. They they're armed with literally bolt guns and knives. There's a guy with a sniper rifle. For the guy with the chainsaw, I just gave him this baton. So you could use enforcers, 10 of them for 30 bucks, nice and cheap. Or you could use scions. I also made some scouts out of scions. 2 bucks 50 cheaper. Oh, but you only get 5 for... Oh, scions are expensive, man. Okay, but these guys are good for uh, scout proxies as well. Uh, they have some sort of, like, less serious armor. Again, you can paint it red. You can make them look very blood angels. So, um, add some, get some scouts, because they're, they're super useful. They're, they're like one of the best units in the game at the moment, I guess. Um, you've got the Judas Yard, you've got the Ten Blade Guard, sorry, the Six Blade Guard, the Ten Death Company with Jump Backs, the Five Death Company without, the Destructor, the Re Redemptor Terminators. Yeah, I, I think that you need some scoring units in this list, 100%. I kind of like having a second chaplain if I'm going to run two squads of Death Company, honestly. Just because um, Death Company really get a lot from having a chaplain with them and it's hard to keep all of them next to a single chaplain. Uh, a single Blister Streadnought, a Repulsor, a Destructor. I mean, you've got a good number of Las Cannons there, I guess. You've got like six, right? Or five and then a Laz Talon, or twin Laz Talon. Or a, it's not called the twin Laz Talon, it's two shots from basically strength 10 Laz Cannon. Uh, you've got the Redemptor with the Macro. Yeah, I mean, it's, this isn't a too bad a list. But it does feel like it needs some dedicated scoring units. You do have the sticky objectives though, so yeah, you know, it's having sticky objectives is nice, I guess. Uh, it definitely helps if you if you've got nothing about the opponent coming in, you don't have to worry about that. You do have infiltrators as well. Yeah, no, there's a lot, there's a lot that's good about this list. Then, I mean, you could always start your incursor, sorry, your intercessors on your home field one, turn one, jump them in repulsor, move the whole thing forward leave the infiltrators behind, and then get those guys out on another objective. Yeah. This list is good. I would add... Or try and add a squad of scouts. I'm not as sold as you are on having a land raider. I mean, having a single land raider is very little difference to having a repulsor, honestly. Um, it'll still get blown up in turn one or two. In some ways, it's nice just having the Repulsor because it's cheap, right? Like, you know, I played against Space Wolves two weeks ago. The guy's got eight Eradicators or six Eradicators with lethal hits and sustained hits. They're going to kill a Land Raider in turn one the second they get in range. So they're going to kill the Repulsor in turn one the second they get in range. So what would you rather? 
what would you rather lose? Well, I'd probably rather lose the cheaper repulsor, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to lose it anyway. The the two up save is going to make no difference against eradicators because I'm still going to save on sixes. It just feels bad when you don't get to roll a save, which is what happens with the repulsor. But really, it's no weaker. Um, can you use the kill team scouts? Yes, hundred percent. The kill team scouts are the forty sk scouts at the moment. Um, because I guess they're not selling them yet for forty k. I know there were some pre-orders today, but I think the pre-orders today were like just custodies and stuff. Um, I don't see, I, I'm really bad at checking pre the pre-orders because since 10th edition came out, I mean, I'm just going to be brutally honest, I haven't bought that much 40k because half my army went to Legends and it was very upsetting. So Custodes Orcs came out for pre-order today. But, yeah. And then the dice... And like a, a orc battle force with a stomper. I mean, that's cool, I guess. But yeah, I've I've, I've been very bad at buying new pre-orders just because I don't I don't like it that they're making it that your models don't last very long. Like those Age of Sigmar models are getting like uh, shelved after six years. I think that's horrific. I I just was working on that battle predator last night, right? That battle predator I've had for like twenty years. If they made that Legends, I'd still be upset, and I've had it for 20 years. Um, yeah, okay, so... So the... The change I would make would be I would get some Scouts. What i drop... Would probably be Terminators, because you already have Bladeguard. And I feel like Bladeguard do the same thing as Terminators, and your Blade Guard fight first. So you would add some scouts, possibly one squad, possibly two, and then, I mean, and then you could take the Land Raider if that's what you were talking about. So drop the Terminators, add a couple of scouts, drop the Repulsor. But I'm doing, I've been running a list with two Land Raiders, and this week I'm dropping one of them, because I'm not convinced on Land Raiders. They work great if you can make those turn one saves. But those turn one saves go both ways, right? Like, turn one, you either save all the shots into the Land Raider and the opponent cries, or turn one, they blow up your Land Raider and you cry. And it seems like more often than not, I end up crying because they blow up my Land Raider in turn one. Did you appease the BAC? Yeah, I think it's a pretty good list to start as Barry. Just, um, if you don't have scouts, then... I actually haven't really looked at the new scouts, but I bought those old models... Or those Necromunda models, because I thought this the old scouts kit sucked. Uh, kill team scouts. What do they look like? Are they a bit better now? They're not too expensive. Thirty bucks. Gonna say, where can I see a pic a nice picture of them? Here, kill team scouts. squad. Yeah, okay. These guys look a little bit nicer. Can I open that in a larger picture? No. No blood angels uh, transfers on the transfer sheet. Thumbs down. Boo. The hell is that? Oh, they got that weird pistol that the Reavers have. Yeah, I mean, I guess they look kind of cool. I'm not sure, so sure about this visor, but... Uh, they're better than they were, I guess, the scouts. Okay, we're going to move on to the last list for tonight. Um, can he buy them? Yeah, I guess he could buy them. I didn't realise they were out already. Uh, I guess they're they're out as kill team, but that might confuse some people. Uh, Phil converted his Reavers into Scouts. Yeah, I mean, I guess at least your Reavers get some play then, right? The box is also a 10-man unit. Yeah, well, I mean, for Blood Angels, Scouts are going to be best armed with knives and shotguns. So do you get do you get enough knives and shotguns in that in that box? Probably not. Let's have a look at the sprue. Uh, one, two. Three, four. Alright, so you don't get enough knives and shotguns. Um do you actually get any shotgun? There's one shotgun. 
I mean, there was five knives. Three shotguns, four shotguns. Five shot. Okay, so you get a decent amount of shotguns. I would arm them, like, you want one shotgun in each squad, and then you want a bunch of combat knives and the chainsaw and the sergeant. Okay. Uh, you can get more shotguns with the Black Templar upgrade sprue. Hopefully Blood Angels will be getting an upgrade sprue uh, as well, sooner rather than later. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, last list of tonight then. So we're six Sons of Sanguinius list tonight, which is pretty crazy. So everyone's going really hard on Sons of Sanguinius now, aren't they? Just constant. Uh, guys, we've got 45 people in the stream. We've got 33 likes. So if you guys who haven't liked the stream yet could do that, I'd much appreciate it. Oh, that's the sprue for five. Oh, cool. So you do get enough shotguns and knives for everybody for, to make it Blood Angels. Well, that's cool. Okay. Um, that's annoying now that I bought the other sprues, but whatever. Okay, Lamartis, Judas, our chaplain of the jump pack. Cool. That's the exact character loadouts that I have. Um, Soul Intercessor of the jump packs, Ballistus Dreadnought, Blade Guard, a Death Company Dreadnought, Death Company Marines times 10 and times 5, a Lancer, an Infiltrator Squad, a Redeemer, a Scout Squad, a Vanguard Veteran Squad, and a Caligus Assassin. Um, this is good, I guess. Two scoring units. Uh, a Redeemer, I assume, to bring some Blade Guard up to the middle of the board. A Ballistus Dreadnought to give some long-range firepower. A Death Company Dreadnought to be in reserve. A Lancer to back up that Ballistus Dreadnought. I mean, a Lancer plus a Ballistus is somewhat <clears throat> decent long-range firepower. The Redeemer to get to the middle of the board. Five Vanguard Veterans with a jump back, just, I guess, along with five Assault Intercessors with jump backs to do some killing on uh, smaller units. Is the Death Company Dreadnought good? He's the only unit that can get a 7-inch charge from Deep Strike. You can get a 7-inch charge from Deep Strike if you target monsters or vehicles. Based on that, I think he is good because he gets rerolls to hit and wound. Um, and he basically gets to fight twice. Because the second the opponent attacks him, he will fight them back again. Um, so I think he's on... 6 attacks at strength 14, minus 3, 3 damage. Rerolls to hit from Death Company, rerolls to wound because twin linked. So basically, um, it's going to be 12 attacks most likely. Strength 14 minus 3 3 damage. He can tank shock as well if he needs to. He has a 6 up feel no pain. He is quite expensive, but the 7 inch charge makes him somewhat more viable. It's the best charge you can get. 81% chance of a successful charge against a monster or vehicle if you're willing to put the CP um, to get him re-rolled. So I think he has to start in reserve. Maybe he can get... Um, maybe he can be rapid ingressed, or maybe he can just come in and make that 7-inch charge. So he, he, I'm going to add one to my list. I'm going to bring it on Wednesday night. I'm, I'm dropping my Redeemer. So I'm dropping my Redeemer. I'm adding that Ball Predator I was working on. I'm adding a, a Death Company Dreadnought. And, um... Yeah, it's, it's just going to be a slightly different... It's still going to have the same tools that I had before, right? But just in a different way, basically. So, um... This guy's four characters are... They're literally the four characters I run. Uh, a Calidus Assassin. The Chaplain with the Jump Pack, the Judasar and Lamartas, I think they're all good. I think they all do good buffs. Uh, I think the 10 Death Company of Martyrs is great. I think the 5 Death Company of Martyrs is great. I think um, the Judasar with the uh, 5... Sorry. The 6 Blade Guard is really good. We've talked a lot about Ballistus Dreadnoughts on the stream saying they're reliable. Assault Intercessors with Jump Packs and Vanguard Vets to pick up Chaff Units. Scouts is a scoring unit. We know the strength of the Redeemer. It is really good. Does have a big weakness, I guess, lack of an invun save, but you could say that about most of the stuff in the Marines kit. Uh the Lancer for long range firepower. I do think it's nice. If you've got the Redeemer plowing forward, I think it's nice to have some strong long range firepower to hit something that's 
going to be difficult to kill at long range and kill it. With that, you've got that with a Lancer and the Ballista Dreadnought. You've also got Infiltrators to screen the backfield. Um, there's a lot to like about this list. Would I change anything? Uh, let me see what he said. Uh, what are your thoughts on changes? Had a similar vibe to your list. He's gone 3-0 with this. Okay. Death Company Dreadnought in reserve for anti-tank. It's been brutal. Jump Intercessors in Deep Strike for scoring. They can still punch up against laced targets. The Vanguard Veteran for scoring with 4++ plus plus to make them versatile. Can advance onto objective turn 1 and force opponents to come and take them off. Or risk losing scoring. It helps with counter charging or killing chaff. Quite a lot of versatility in fast moving units with Deep Strike that can start on and off the board. Some ranged armor. Anti-tank. I ran double ballistas but I've now swapped up for one Lancer for the strength 14 ranged attack. Strength 14 range attack is certainly good if you're fighting, like this week I fought against the Castellan, and um, when you're fighting against a Castellan, it's hard to even want to target it, right? Because like, for example, my list had 8 LAS cannons in it. I don't want to be shooting my LAS cannons at a target that I'm only wounding on 5s, because I only have 8 shots, so I'm probably going to make some misses. So he's probably only going to have to make like 1 or 2 saves. So I guess... That's why when that's why Vindicators are very good. That's why Lancers are very good because they've got that higher strength shooting. So having a Lancer for strength fourteen, I guess he's saying it's better than Artisan of War on his Chaplain. That's probably a valid point, right? And if you are playing against a Castellan, being able to have a Lancer maybe potentially do like a Lancer could do eighteen damage to it, right? Um Having a Lancer be able to potentially do 18 damage to it could actually be very scary and it might actually have to hide a little bit and respect the firepower of the Lancer. That doesn't often happen. Um, so yeah, I could get on board with running a Lancer. Like if, like if I came up against a Castellan quite often, I could get on board because you get to reroll one hit, one wound, one save. Uh, sorry, one hit, one, one hit, one wound, one damage. Strength 14 minus 4, so the Castellan would just be saving on its 5 up in run. Potentially doing 9 damage. You're hitting on a 2 if you stay still. You're, hit, you're wounding on a 3, but you're re-rolling 1 dice. Uh, I may also drop the Vanguard Veterans for a second Infiltrator squad if I feel more board lockout is needed. So far it's been fine, it is. I'm not using any board lockout, but I can understand why it can be good. I also think board lockout can be difficult to use successfully. Like, I played against Grey Knights this week, and Grey Knights were all over the place. And um, I didn't have any board lockout in the list. Some would have helped, but I wouldn't have had my board... My board locking out unit wouldn't have been in a position to help me against the Grey Knights 3-unit deep strike shenanigans turn 1 or whatnot. So it's... Um, I'm not sure I care all that much about infiltrators. Um, it's almost like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, right? If you if you run against Chaos Knights, for example, they have enough indirect firepower to kill a squad of infiltrators in turn one indirect from f from anywhere on the board. The infiltrators will just be dead turn one. So if you're going to use those guys at the backfield, it doesn't matter, they're dead turn one. So it's like, if you pick them against Chaos Knights, they're a really bad pick, and Heavy Intercessors are much better. But then I've been running Heavy Intercessors because I feel like the Heavy Intercessors are more survivable against everything, and being maybe being more survivable is better than preventing certain armies deep strike in. But like I said, you can't be strong against everything. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Um, Chaos Knights, you're not trying to stop the screening, sure, but your 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 units are dead anyway, so if that was your backfield holding objective, then you've just got nothing alive um, to hold your backfield objective, which can potentially become a problem, right? So it's like, like I said, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Um, so I think if you're holding your home field objective with infiltrators, or heavy intercessors, or intercessors, whatever choice you make is fine. Just every choice you make is going to have some sort of weakness, but you can't you can't know that until you get into the game, right? Um, I like the Death Company Dreadnought. I like the idea of the Lancer and the Ballista Dreadnought. Uh, I've run a Redeemer a lot. Th this is one way I could have gone on my list, actually. Like, I could have run pretty much this exact list. Um, I've gone slightly different direction. 
But you know what? What I'll do is I like because this list is so similar to mine. What I'll probably do is I'll run what I had planned this week, and if I lose it, I might run this just to just to see how this goes. Uh, he said he was three zero with this. So and he did say that he's taken some uh, inspiration from my list, right? Yeah, yeah. He said it's a similar vibe to my list. So I don't remember what I changed because I haven't actually updated it yet in Battlescribe. Um, I just sent in a text message to Miles because Miles was trying to help me. Um, let me go find my Facebook message to Miles and I'll tell you what I have. So I was going to be running these three exact characters. The Blade Guard, the Death Company Dreadnought, the 15 Death Company Marines, Heavy Intercessors rather than Infiltrators, a Land Raider rather than Redeemer, the Squad of Scouts, the Kalidus Assassin. So I wouldn't have the Vanguard Veterans, the Redeemer part of the Land Raider, the Lancer, the Ballista Dreadnought, and the Assault Intercessors. Is that right? But what I would have. is an impulsor with three blade guard inside it a ball predator a predator destructor and another squad of scouts so yeah this is this is very similar to what i've run um I like this. I think this could be worth a try. I think this this sort of list must suit me, right? Because it's got killing power, and I like to kill my enemy. Like, all that Death Company, all those Blade Guard, killing power. Uh, the Lancers, the Land Raider. Yeah, I, I like this sort of list, uh, and I would play this list as well. Um, how do you submit your list? When the stream ends, simply make a new comment on this video or another one and just paste your list in just to like in text as a comment to this video and i will you know like that basically before i go live each week i search the comments from the previous week and i um i get i pick six of them and that's how the shit and that's how the show goes uh thank you so much for watching this week guys uh i hope that was interesting there is like i said there's new points coming there's a Balanced data slate is supposed to be coming in like three weeks' time. So that should be kind of exciting. We'll cover all those changes, obviously, when they happen. Um, in the interim, I guess I've got like... I actually need to make them the tournament pack for our GT, don't I? Because uh, our GT is only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Like 11 weeks away, I've got a GT. Okay, so I need to I need to figure out a strong list in the next couple of weeks because I need to get like eight repetitions on it before I go to the GT. I like having... <coughs> excuse me. I like having a lot of reps on the same list before I go to a tournament. I like to know all the strengths and weaknesses. And even if you don't have the strongest list or even if you can't make some of the changes I suggest, I always think it's best to try and get a lot of practice with the same list. It's better to play a practice list than one that you've just picked up and made never had a chance to practice okay uh enjoy your night guys thanks so much for watching if you haven't liked the stream already do that if you want to subscribe for weekly blood angels content as well you can do that um i'm gonna go see if my four-year-old is actually asleep <laughs> i'll see you guys um wednesday night battle live battle against Dukari. that's the next time i'll be live so hopefully i'll see some of you guys there What's your feeling on Sangri Priests? I like them, but I don't know why they're so expensive. Uh, I think you get more value if you attach them to 10-man units over 5-man units. Most of the time, I, I generally recommend you attach characters to large units. The only time I don't is if it's like the Judas Yar with the Blade Guard or a Chaplain with like 5 Death Company. Most L, or or that or that captain with the five assault intercessors is very good. Most of the time, I reckon you should attach your units to. Um, excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Attach the characters to larger units. That's what I'm trying to say. 
All right. Enjoy your, your rest of your weekend, guys. Thanks so much for stopping by. We'll see you uh, Wednesday night.